Hi guys, welcome again to our MPLab XC8 tutorials for Absolute Beginner series. This is tutorial 44, SPI communication with peak microcontroller. SPI stands for Serial Peripheral Interface. The SPI protocol was initially developed and proposed by Motorola for use in microprocessor and microcontroller based interface applications. In a system that uses SPI bus communication, one device acts as a master and other device act as slaves. The master initiates the communication and also provides the clock pulse to the slave devices. SPI is implemented in the peak microcontroller by hardware module called MSSP, which stands for Synchronous Serial Port or Master Synchronous Serial Port. This module is built into many different peak microcontroller devices. It allows serial communication between two or more devices at a high speed and reasonably easy to implement. The MSSP can operate either in SPI mode or in I2C mode. The SPI is usually called four-wire full duplex synchronous serial communication because if you've got only one master controlling one slave device, then you're going to have only four wires. The first wire is serial clock, is usually abbreviated as SCLK. This is a serial clock signal. It's generated by the master device and control when data is sent and when data is read. The serial clock pin of master is connected to the serial clock pin of the slave. If we've got to more than one slave device in the bus, then you're gonna connect the serial clock of the master to all the different serial clock of the slaves. So all these devices, they don't have to be the same as long as they support the SPI protocol. In this demonstration, the first device is a temperature sensor, the second device is a real-time clock, and the third device is the SD card. The next wire is the SDO, which stands for Serial Data Output. It's also called sometimes MOSI, which stands for Master Out Slave In. This is a pin that is used to transfer data from the master to the slave. And if you've got more than one slave, then you'll have to connect this Serial Data Out to Serial Data In of the slaves. The next wire is Serial Data In, which is also called MISO which stands for master in slave out. This pin carries data out from the slaves to the master. And if you've got more than one slave, then all the data out of the different slaves should be connected to the data in of the master. The fourth wire is the slave select pin, which is also called chip select pin. This pin allows a master device to indicate to a slave that the master wishes to start an SPI data exchange between that slave device and itself. The signal usually is active low. A low on this line will indicate the SPI is active and communication can take place while a high will signal inactivity. This signal must be used when more than one slave exists in the system but can be optional when only one slave exists in the circuit but it's always a good practice to use it. Depending on the number of slave devices that you've got in your bus, we can have more than one chip select lines, one per device. As you can see in our demonstration, we've got three slave select pins. The first one is connected to the first slave. The second one is connected to the second slave. And the third one is connected to the third slave. And if you've got more than three, then each additional slave device will have also its own slave select pin. There are many devices nowadays that support the SPI protocol and can easily communicate with the microcontroller via the SPI bus. You could have SPI analog to digital converters, digital to analog converters, SD card, as in this demonstration. You could have also real-time clock like the DS1306. We could have also temperature sensors, LCD displays, serial EEPROM, and so on. There are many advantages of using SPI compared to other serial communication. The first advantage, SPI is full duplex communication, so you can send and receive data at the same time. 
SPI is faster than the asynchronous serial in R2C. It allows large quantities of data to be transferred quickly. SPI can operate at extremely high speed, but generally dictated by the slowest device on the bus. The common bus speed are in the 1 to 100 megabits per second range. The other advantage of using SPI, the hardware protocol is simple to implement. The receiver hardware can be a simple shift resistor. Transceivers are not needed. Slaves use the master clock, so they don't need to have a precision oscillator themselves. As you can see in this demonstration, SPI support multiple slaves. The other advantage of using SPI, it's the complete protocol flexibility for the bit transferred. So this is not limited to 8-bit word and arbitrary choice of message size, content, and purpose. Another advantage of using SPI is power requirement is lower compared to I2C due to less circuitry and there is no need for pull-up resistors. But with everything, there is nothing which is perfect. SPI has got also its own disadvantages. That's why you can always compare it with other communication protocol and see which one is better for your application. The first can note it requires more signal lines due to the fact that each slave device must have its own chip select line. This will require more wires than other serial communications, especially when many slaves are involved. So imagine if you could have, let's say, 10 slave devices, and each slave device should have its own chip select line. These wires could really be cumbersome. The other disadvantage is the master must control all communications, so slaves cannot talk directly to each other. And lastly, SPI is designed for fairly short range. So you can use SPI when devices are on the same PC board at the master or via a relatively short cable compared to RS-232 which can go to several meters, RS-485 which can even reach 1000 meters is also short range compared to CAN bus as well. In this demonstration we're gonna use one peak microcontroller as a master. It's gonna control two slave peak microcontrollers. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to connect our serial clock, which is SCK. In this peak microcontroller is on pin RC3. It's going to be connected to each slave that we're going to have on our bus. We've got only two slaves. So it's going to be connected to the first slave, serial clock, which is also RC3, and to the second one, which is also RC3, serial clock. The data in of our master, which is SDI, should be connected to SDO, which is data out of the slaves. So all the data out of the slaves should be connected to data in of the master. And data out of the master should be connected to data in of the slaves. The other thing is the chip select pin. You can use any available pin as your chip select pin. In this demonstration, we're going to use RC0 as chip select 1. It's going to be connected to SS, which we said SS is slave select pin. So the first chip select pin from the master, you can use any pin, but the, the slave, we should use the SS pin, which is select slave pin. In this peak microcontroller, it's on RA5. The second chip select pin, we use RC1. We're gonna connect it to the slave select pin of the slave, which in this case is also RA5. In this demonstration, we're going to have two switches connected to the master. So whenever switch one is closed, the master is going to send a one to slave one, and it's going to send a zero to slave two. And whenever switch two is closed only, then the master is going to send a zero to slave one and going to send a one to slave two. And when both switches are closed, then it's going to send a one to both slaves. And when both switches are open, then it's going to send a zero to both slaves. So if a slave receives a one, it's going to switch on the three LEDs connected to its port B, one after the other at an interval of one second. And whenever a slave receives a zero, it's going to switch off all LEDs. SPI is very easy to implement. We're going to show you how you can use MPLAB code configurator to configure our, our devices. You're going to see how it's very easy to use SPI bus communication with peak microcontrollers. So remember these peak slave devices, they could be any device. They could be temperature sensor, SD card or any SPI slave device. 
This is going to be the end of this part one. We're going to continue our project in part two. We're going to learn how to configure our SPI master and slave devices with MPLAB code configurator. And we're going to learn how to use the SPI functions generated by MPLAB code configurator. Thank you guys for watching this tutorial. Don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel to receive more tutorials. And I'll see you guys in part two. Thank you.